This third video in my panel data regression series shows how to run fixed effects least squares dummy variable model. And the demo is going to utilize both Excel and eViews. But first, a tiny bit of the underlying concepts. Fixed effects models account for the effects of firm heterogeneity, which are those differential firm characteristics I spoke about in the last video. And it does this by explicitly including a fixed effects term in the model specification as I show here. And so from the general panel data specification right up here, what we're going to do is to break down the error term VT into the firm dependent error term omega and the idiosyncratic term epsilon. The firm dependent error term omega is what captures unobserved heterogeneity. Specific to the least squares dummy variable approach, Heterogeneity is accounted for by allowing differential intercepts in the model so that in this regression model right here, beta sub zero i refers to the intercept value of a particular firm i in the sample. We account for, di for uh, differential intercepts with the use of dummy variables, one for each firm, as you are going to see shortly. And by this design, differences in intercepts will, ref will reflect the unique characteristics of each firm in the sample. And uh, if we find that significant differences exist in these intercepts after we calculate them, we're going to conclude that heterogeneity d uh, does in fact exist in that the firms are not homogeneous, in which case fixed effects estimation would be considered more suitable uh, than pooled OLS. All right, so to kind of see how this works, all right, consider this uh, illustrative panel data set right here where y is being regressed against x1 and x2. For the intercept to vary among the three firms, we're going to create dummy variables where d1 takes on the value of 1 for firm 1, which is what you see right here in the yellow patch. And d2 will take on the value of 1, 0 otherwise, which you see here right here in the pink patch. And so firm 3 in this example is the reference category, which is determined where D1 and D2 are both equal to 0. And that's what you see here. You don't want to include D3 because if you do, you're going to run into the dummy variable trap. And you don't want that. All right, For three firms, you need only two dummy variables. All right, so what this means is that when we run the regression, beta sub zero will be the unique intercept for firm three, which again is where D1 and D2 are both zero. Now, in the same vein, we, you find that the intercept for firm one, which is determined where D1 is one, and of course D2 is zero, is going to be the sum of beta sub zero and beta sub one. And for firm two, which is where D2 is one, while d1 is 0 is going to be the sum of beta sub 0 and beta sub 1. So to summarize, the intercept value for firm 3 is beta sub 0, which is what we directly observe after we view the regression outputs. For firm 1, it's going to be the sum of beta sub 0 and beta sub 1, and for firm 2, sum of beta sub 0 and beta sub 2. So I had to say this again because it's important to know that the intercept value for a particular firm is the sum of the intercept value of the reference firm and the coefficient of the dummy variable representing that firm, as you see right here in the specification. Taken individually, beta sub 1, which is the coefficient for D1, the dummy variable for firm 1, is actually calculating the difference between the intercept value for firm 1 and the intercept value for the reference firm. And likewise, beta sub 2 calculates the difference between the intercept value for firm number 2 and the uh, intercept value for the reference category. And we're going to see how this shakes out when we interpret our regression results. Now, for our working example, we're going to regress market capitalization against capital expenditure and book value of equity using a balanced panel data set of 10 firms with 20 years of data for a total of 200 observations. And in this analysis, we're going to have nine dummy variables 
because we have 10 firms in total. So in this example, in this working example, firm 10 is going to be the reference category, which is determined where all the dummy variables are equal to zero. So I'm going to show this real quick on Excel. And right here in Excel, you can see my data sets color coded to delineate the firms, the different firms, all the way down to firm number 10, right? So to run this thing on Excel, go to data, data analysis, and then you're going to scroll down to regression right here and then OK. And for Y, click on this guy right here and work your way all the way down and click here for X while cursor is blinking there. Go to the top of the file, highlight all of these guys and work your way all the way down. Click here for labels, here for output, here. Let cursor be blinking there and let's use a spot right here anywhere on the spreadsheet to place our outputs, which you see right here. That's our F, that's the p-value, which in scientific notation you can see is virtually zero, all right? And then these are the coefficients of the dummy variable and the two regressors, and these are their p-values, which you can see are virtually all equal to zero. So we're going to do the same thing on e-views. So let's uh, get up our e-views right here, and but first we're going to have to import our data. So go here, open foreign data as work file, and let's look for it. And uh, go down here. I see it right here. All right, open it. And next, actually just go ahead and click finish. All right, and that'll do it. Click no, and there you have it. So right here at the top of the of the window, you see we have data for 10 firms ranging from 2001 to 2020, giving us 200 observations. So to run this regression, what we're going to do is to first click on the um, dependent variable market capitalization, hold down the control key, and then click the regressors in the order that you want them to appear. I want the dummies first, so I'm going to click D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then click on capital expenditure and book value of equity. And we're good to go. Right click on any of these guys right here and open as equation right there. And there you have it. Now leave this as least squares. You don't have to do any panel options. The reason is you already have specified the dummy variable. So go ahead and click OK. And that's your output right here looking all nice and pretty. All right. And so I'm going to uh, rush right over to my PowerPoint so I can show it to you in a clearer form. So again, this is a command we just ran right now. And instead of clicking on the individual variables so as to have it appear like this on the equation palette, you can also type out your equation, which is what you see right here in red, and then copy and paste it right in here. And you're going to get the same outputs, which you see right here on the right side. So this is what you just saw. And the regret whenever you're interpreting your regression results start by looking at the F statistic because you got to confirm that your regression is statistically significant before you can say anything else and surely this regression is statistically significant with an F value of 415 and a P value that is virtually zero so and next we find looking at R squared which is the coefficient of determination that about 96 percent of the variation in market capitalization is explained by this regression which is more than was the case in the pooled OLS regression where we had only 74 percent so already we can see that fixed effects model gives a better fit now Going to the regressors, capital expenditure has a positive impact, as you can see here, while book value of equity right here has a negative impact on market capitalization. Coefficient signs are nevertheless the same as we saw them in pooled OLS, capex positive and book value of equity negative. All right, and these coefficients are actually are, are also sig significant, as you can see here, and intuitive. Increased investment in capital expenditure, this says, has a positive impact on market valuation, while increased external equity financing has a negative impact, perhaps due to the well-talked about uh, uh, negative signaling associated with the issue of no equity.
Again, different intercepts tell us that we have 10 different regression lines, one for each firm. However, remember to determine the actual intercept for each firm, we're going to have to perform these adjustments right here. So these are the dummy variable coefficients from running this regression, these, va sorry, these uh, values right here. And so we're going to have to calculate the intercepts for each firm to kind of see what they truly are, which is what you see right here. All right, so uh, going back here, heterogeneity appears to be present because, as you can see, the dummy variables are pretty much all statistically significant, looking at their F values, suggesting that fixed effects model may be more reliable than pooled OLS, and we're quite happy about that.